right. All right, fam, please take a seat. Welcome to church. If you're visiting with us today, we send out the lesson notes so you can follow along. Otherwise, if you've got a Bible, turn with me to Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6, and we've been looking at a bunch of miracles this year, in the year of miracles. You know, because God is God who's always doing miracles, amen? Yeah. And as a bit of a tradition that one of our brothers started, I'm going to begin today's sermon with a question. Slightly breaking tradition. It's, it's, just, it's just a normal question, okay? It's not a question about you, so don't worry, don't feel insecure or anything like that. Not talking about anyone's particular sin yet. Um, but, you know, with... Okay, this is a question. I've got a question for you. Which is heavier, a kilogram of steel or a kilogram of feathers? You know, you may have heard this before, so you also know, like, oh, it's the same. I'm not tricked by you. Well, here's a second question. Which is heavier, uh, which is harder to pick up? Which is easier to pick up? It's the steel, isn't it? I mean, even if you got a bag, you're smart. You're trying to outsmart my question. You got a bag, I'll put it in the bag. I mean, that's a lot of effort. Take each feather and put it in the bag. And then you gotta bag it up, and the bag is like this big. I don't know if you've seen the kilogram of feathers. It's huge. Okay? Compared to picking up steel. And yet, when you think about it, you go feather, steel. How is it easier? Well, sometimes what looks easier is actually harder. You know, Today's lesson is entitled, God's Way or the Hard Way. So which way do you want to take? Which way are you taking? You know, we're looking at Mark chapter 6, verse 45. We're looking at the miracle of walking on water. Because when we think about it, a miracle is something you have never done. Or can never imagine yourself doing. Mark 6, 45 to 52. It says, immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat. I mean, that, that's a miracle. Getting people to actually do what you want, right? <laughs> and go on ahead of him to Bethsaida, where while he dismissed the crowd. Yeah. After leaving it, he went up on a mountainside to pray. Mm. Later that night, the boat was in the middle of the lake. Okay. And he was alone on land. He saw the disciples straining at the oars because the wind was against them. Shortly before dawn, he went out to them walking on the lake. He was about to pass by them. But when they saw him walking on the lake, he thought, they thought that he was a ghost. They cried out because they all saw him and were terrified. Immediately, he spoke to them and said, Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Then he climbed into the boat with them, and the wind died down. They were completely amazed, for they had not understood about the loaves. Their hearts were hardened. You know, Jesus, he walked on water. I love particularly, you know, this story is, it happens in Matthew, in Mark, as well as in John. And you know, one of the cool things I really love about it is that in this particular passage, it focuses on, hey, the disciples were straining hard at the oars. Man, they were doing it the difficult way, the hard way. Yeah. Jesus was like, man, you know, he's, I want to walk on the water. Ooh. I always met Jesus in this moment, particularly because it goes, he was about to pass by them. Yeah. So it's like you're seeing all your friends, they're struggling <laughs> so hard. And you're like, I'm just going to walk on the water. Hey, guys, how's it going? I'll see you on the other side, right? Yeah. You know, but Jesus was like, man, what is the easiest way to go from here to there? Walking. So I want to walk across the water. You know, imagine, can you imagine how convenient life would be with miracles? You know, I think about even coming to church today. I live on Hong Kong Island side. And I was like stressed out. Well, I was a little bit stressed out because I arrived at the pier at Central. And I was like, the boat is there. And I don't know how long the boat has been there. So I'm like, maybe I got to run up to catch up to the boat. You don't want to miss the boat. Man, if I could walk on water, who cares about the boat? I'll go whenever I like. Just walk across the harbor, chilling. Okay, arrive here, we're at church. Awesome. You know, or imagine being a doctor with the ability to heal the sick. You just touch people and they're well. You don't even need to give them medicine. 
Don't need to buy medicine. Don't need to queue up to see the doctor. I just walk past people. And then everyone's healed. You know, you don't have to wait in line for a doctor. That would be awesome. Or a doctor who could raise the dead. Man, you make a mistake. Oh no, the patient died. Oh, you know what? Boom, he's not, he's not dead anymore. That would, be, that would make life so much easier. Think about, you know, we talked about a lesson before, a couple weeks ago where Jesus found some money in like a fish in the lake. Imagine just find, knowing where all the money that people drop on the street. Like, you know, imagine how, many, how much money and lost possessions people drop, right? Imagine just knowing where everything is. Like someone like dropped, you know, a gold watch like 50 years ago in the sand. You go, it's right here and, ah, special missions. You know, that would be so great. You know, imagine feeding 5,000. Just taking one bread and going, and you feed 5,000 people. Shiny and the sisters are like, that would be awesome for birthday parties. You know, some of the brothers are like, that would be awesome just for me. <laughs> Amen, bro. <laughs> I, you know, I was thinking about, man, you know, if, you know that question when you ask your friends, what superpower would you like to have? For me, it was always moving things with my mind. So I can just sit here and pick up things from all the way over there without standing up. Because <laughs> I was lazy. I was like, I just want that thing over there. And I'm like, don't want to ask someone because I'm proud. I don't want to go over there because I'm lazy. Just, that would be awesome. You know, I got two points for you guys today. Point number one, are you doing life the hard way? You know, we're looking at this story here. Do you even realize that there even is a problem in your life? No matter how many times, you know, people, when a solution point out to them, they're like, I didn't, know, I didn't even realize that this was the hard way to do things. Think about the disciples here. They were in the boat with the wind against them. Again, normally, you know, back then they don't have motors, they don't have things, so it's either wind power or sailing power, right? Yeah. And yet, when the wind is directly against you, you go, man, I could fight the wind, or I could just wait for it to go away. And normally, actually, people would then wait, wait favorable, oh, let's win. The wind will change, and then we can then sail across the lake. It's not a long sail. Yeah. But yet, rather than doing that, they simply tried harder. Mm -hmm. Have you ever not succeeded at something? Okay, awesome. You know, you got, okay, you're like humans like me, amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And have you ever just gone, you know what? I'll just try harder. Yeah, true. That's, yeah. I mean, if you're lazy, then you've got to try hard. But sometimes you go, man, you've got to go, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm just not doing the right thing. Yeah. No, I, I, I'll just do it harder. Like, that doesn't work. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You know, perhaps they were already, already halfway across the other side. So at the beginning, the wind was with them, so they're like, oh, this is awesome. They go to the middle and the wind changes, and they're like, okay, well, we're already halfway there. Yeah. We gotta finish it. Mm. Maybe they're almost, you know, like literally like 10 meters away from the shore, and they're about to get off the boat, and the wind blows them all the way back into the middle. And they're like, well, we're almost there. We gotta keep going. Mm. Maybe they're already running late. Mm. You know, maybe the plans that they were running behind them, man, we were supposed to go over there for dinner, or for a date, or for a business meeting, you know, or someone was gonna be, there's an opportunity here for my life yeah. that I don't want to miss. <laughs> you know, actually, I looked it up. Someone in 2009, the Sea of Galilee, this lake, the sea that they were on, yeah. um, is actually, you know, like from here to the other side of the harbor, yeah. maybe three to four uh, times or something like that. I can't remember. But it's, 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 it's not super far. And on a clear day, you could see to certain bits of the other side. You know, there was a man named Bill Wilzine, I think I'm pronouncing it right, and he swam across the long side. So the Sea of Galilee is an oval. Okay, so sometimes it's shorter, sometimes uh, it's longer. And he swam across the long side of the Sea of Galilee, and it took him 10 hours and 25 minutes. Wow. But he swam it across, you know, he just swam across, and you know, it's swimmable. It may not be an easy swim, but it's swimmable. Now these disciples, they were in a boat which usually is easier. I don't know if you've tried it. Again, taking the ferry from uh, Central to here is a lot easier than swimming from Central to here. Okay? And yet, after many hours in the middle of the night, after, again, imagine how long Jesus' prayers are. You know, After one of those prayers, they were still in the middle of the lake. They were still not that much faster than a man who could swim that distance. And you can, you know, because I love this example because you talk about technology, right? But then swimming speed, you know, that doesn't actually change that much between, you know, a long time ago and now. It's, you know, people just swim a certain speed. Yeah. They were not that much faster than the man who was swimming. Oh, yeah. At some point, you got to ask yourself, you got to question, are we doing things right? Is this really a boat? Yes. Are, we, are we just, you know, what's going on? True. How are we in a boat but the same speed as the guy is swimming? Yeah. 
And in fact, it's different because the guy swimming is making progress. We are not. Because if you don't realize that there is a problem, you won't look for a solution or do anything differently. And on the other side, if you do, sometimes we go, man, I know that there's a problem. But when you don't do anything differently, you actually don't think there is a problem. True. You think it's okay to keep doing what I'm doing. Right. You know, I was, uh, uh, Jackson and I were doing this Bible study with one of our friends, June, yesterday. Oh and, um, you know, we were looking for a place to meet, and Jackson found this, you know, place where it was a Starbucks in Central that had seats. Oh. Miracle, right? Wow. Um, and so I was like, oh, that's awesome, cool. I started looking it up. And okay, it's on the other side of the IFC. So I was walking in this direction. Oh, it's on that side, according to Google Maps. So I turn around, and I start heading that way. Okay. And uh, spoiler alert, that was not the direction where the Starbucks was at. <laughs> okay. And I start walking, I start walking. Five minutes, ten minutes later, I'm like, let me check the, hmm. Actually, no, 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 I was, like, I was at the location. I'm like, where is it? Where is it? And even better, I went to, then I was like, man, there's a bit of a problem, small problem. So I go in to look for the sign. Where is the Starbucks? And I'm like, no. Like, it's, there's Starbucks, but it's not the Starbucks that Jackson sent me a photo of. I was like, oh no, real problem now. Not only can I not find the Starbucks, but it's not on the map of the mall. I go, oh, this is interesting. And that actually finally, that made me call Jackson. Be like, Jackson, I need help. Where is the Starbucks? But you know, it took me walking like literally the other way, most of the way around the IFC, which is a bit of a square, most of the way around, and like 15 minutes later, oh. and I was like, Jackson, I need help. I'm lost. Help. <laughs> but I didn't, for 15 minutes, I was walking, I was walking, I was walking. That was all wasted, first of all, because I was not walking the right direction. Yeah. But I didn't realize it. Yeah. Because I didn't realize there was a problem, I didn't ask for help. True. If I just asked for help, I'd be there in like less than five minutes, actually. Yeah. I was actually, afterwards you found that I was, when I turned around and started heading in that direction, I was almost where Jackson was. Uh, oh. So I was going to where Jackson was, and like, you know, maybe like uh, 50 meters away, around the corner, I would have saw, seen him. And instead of going to see him, I turned around and walked a long way around the IFC. But I didn't realize there was a problem. Yeah. You know, are you looking to every direction except for God? They had the disciples in the boat crossing the sea. It's not the first time they'd done it. Maybe, you know, if it's the first time, maybe they could be excused. And yet it's not. They had sailed across the sea before. You know, and last time they were on the sea, the same thing happened. Storm happened. But last time Jesus was in the boat with them. And Jesus calmed the wind, calmed the waves. Everything was calm immediately. So they had seen the miracle before. And yet... They know that Jesus is power over nature, yet no one looked to him or even prayed to God. They literally relied on their own human strength rather than God's. And while G uh, the disciples were working hard, Jesus was walking on water. You know, when you look at Jesus' life, he had, he had a great life. He was a man full of joy and had an amazing life. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to 30 says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He goes, Jesus goes, even when I'm working, it's easy. Even when I have a burden, it's not hard. You know, he brings an amazing life for his disciples, people that follow in his ways. John 10.10, 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. You know, I love it. It's not even that for God it's easier or you just have more power. It's like, man, if God gives you talent, then you can, like, do things a lot easier. It's not even that. Yeah. Yeah. For Jesus, there was not even a problem. <laughs> he, didn't, he looked at the Sea of Galilee, the lake, and was like, what lake? I'll just walk over. True. You know, God often looks at our mountains in our personal lives. And he's going, what are you talking about? I don't see nothing. Right. There is no obstacle there yeah. when we follow in his ways. Zechariah 4, 6 to 7. So he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. What are you, mighty mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you will become level ground. Then he will bring out the capstone to shouts of God bless it, God bless it. You know, last week we had a prayer walk. Yeah. Going down the mountain. Yeah. Imagine if you're going up the mountain. You guys would have very different feelings towards me and Lot who planned it. But God looks and God goes, man, this mountain, what mountain? It's level. It's flat. It's a flat ground. 
You know, imagine, you know, like Alvin's uh, welcome message, talking about C-O-H-K. Saul just looks at this, uh, the incline and, and turns to Alvin's like, what incline? This is normal. This is flat. This is flat. This is going downhill. Then God was like, mountain? What's a mountain? It's level. It's easy. It's nothing. This problem is in your life? What problem? I didn't see it. I think of like the most crazy and amazing things where people go, man, it's so hard. And then it could be so much easier. I think it's stuff, getting stuff for free. Come on, I think I've told this story before. One of our brothers was tasked with finding a pulpit. Yeah. Okay, pulpit. Yeah. Okay, bro, what's, what's the budget, what's the church budget for the pulpit? Free. This was in Sydney, for free. Bro was like, what? Anyways, comes back three days later. Hey, bro, I found a pulpit for $150. He was so satisfied with himself. Like, yeah, I got it, that, I did it. That's not free, bro. <laughs> Joe then jumps on uh, the, the, his iPad and stuff like that, looks. Hey, bro, I found a pulpit for free. Ooh. And in fact, I found three for free. Wow. You know, I remember the most random things. We needed a lion head for a lion dance, right? Yeah. And you think about, okay, where would you get such a thing? Like, even if you were to go and like order and make one, like who would you even call? You know what I mean? It's not like, you know, every day. And particularly, it would be easier here. This was again in Sydney. Aaron walks around in the store. There was a lion head in the store. And it was like a massage store, like completely unrelated. And then he goes over to the owner, I need that lion head. Can I have it for free? Yes. Owner was like, sure. Wow, you know, I think of even the venue. <laughs> I love the, the, the church that when, when I got baptized, the church was meeting in this uh, building that belonged to an old Presbyterian church. Mm -hmm. um, and the story of how he got is amazing. Wow. Joe's walking around all the different churches around the city, asking people, hey, can I have your venue? We're, we're a church, we're trying to find a place to meet. Can we have this place for free? He just walks around the city doing that. Walks into this beautiful church in the middle, right next to the train station. I mean, train station here, cross the street. That's the, uh, that's the, um, uh, the, 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 the venue. And he goes, can I have it for free? No. Okay, what about 100 bucks? Done. 100 bucks per week for that venue. All, all of our meetings, all three of our meetings. Midweek, Sunday, leaders, all three for $100 a week. And it was like, can I have it for free? No, 100, okay, done. <laughs> But I was like, man, that's such a crazy story. Yeah, it can be so easy. I think about someone, uh, 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 someone I knew, again, uh, that was in my Bible talk when I got baptized. Yeah. And his story of him going to seek God is amazing. Yeah. Right. He's studying for his final exam. Okay. Bible says, seek first the kingdom. You got to come to church. Yeah. Final exam on Monday. Master's degree, architecture. Oh. Architecture. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay. And then he chooses, you know what? Bible says, seek first his kingdom. I'm yeah. going to church. Wow. Okay, come on. Goes to church. There's a baptism after church. Goes to baptism. Oh, wow. After church, after baptism. Okay, I'm going to go home and study. Yeah. I only got four hours left. Wow, okay. Um, you know, and he goes, well, textbook is 20 something, 22, 23 chapters. Yeah. I'm going to choose four chapters to study because one for each hour. <laughs> God, I really need your help. Yeah. Come on. Then the next day he opens his exam paper. There are four questions on exactly the four chapters he studies. Wow. And not only that, because he comes to church. Wow. Actually, one of the other brothers at church was working in architecture. Right. Oh. And two weeks after his final exam, his results haven't even come out yet, he's already got an architecture job. Nice. Oh. Wow. Life can be so easy. Yeah. Yeah. Think about Jesus here. Why did he choose to walk on water? We already knew that he can calm winds and waves and storms. Easy for him, right? Mm. And yet, he didn't calm the storm. He didn't change the wind to help the disciples get across the lake. You know, he, well, you know, um, and yet, when you think about it, what's the difference? Mm -hmm. Do you only trust God when you feel like you're in control of your life? Mm. We're saying the Bible with someone yesterday, and, and he goes, well, you know what would really help me to seek God? If I got all HDs in my course and there was no worries, then I would seek God. I would put him first. Well, when you think about it, that's going, I'm going to trust God when I've got nothing, I've got no problems. Yeah. I'm going to trust God when there's nothing to trust God with. Right. I'm going to trust God when it cannot go wrong. Wow. I'm only going to trust God when my trust doesn't need to be tested. Wow. And often storms of life remind us that we are not in control, but only God is. Yeah. Psalm 107 verse 23. Some went out to the sea in ships. They were merchants on the mighty waters. They saw the works of the Lord, his wonderful deeds in the deep. 
For he spoke and stirred up a tempest that lifted high the waves. They mounted up to the heavens and went down to the depths. In their peril, their courage melted away. They reeled and staggered like drunkards. They were at their wit's end. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he brought them out of their distress. These guys, they lost their courage. Why? Because their courage was in, hey, we know how to tame the sea. We know how to sail a boat. Their trust was not in God. You know, today, are you still holding stubbornly to your own ways? Why? Why are you taking the harder way to life? You're like the, the, the disciples in the boats working really hard. You go, man, God, I work so hard. You should give me success. And Jesus is like, why are you working so hard? Yeah. You're doing the wrong thing. Mm-hmm. You're not crying out to God. Yeah. You know, the challenge is make a decision to radically change your life today. Come on, Take the Jesus Week challenge. Study the Bible every single day this week to start following God's way. Oh. Point number two, you can walk in water too. You know, Peter, he makes a uh, courageous decision to follow Jesus literally. Matthew 14, 26 to 33, same story. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage of his eye, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, Mm -hmm. tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. You know, why did Peter follow Jesus and walk on the water? Well, why not? He was like, well, if, we, if that's a thing we can do, then let's do it. Yeah. You know, if we can walk in water, it's a lot easier than what I'm doing right now. Yeah. You know, maybe he was even thinking, man, there's, there's no way Jesus, like, that's, a, that's a son of God thing, right? That's a Jesus thing. He's not going to have me also go in the water. I'll, just, I'll shoot my shot. I'll try. He won't, he won't say yes. You know, maybe he didn't think Jesus would actually let him do it. You know, your, reflect, your actions reflect the kind of life that you believe God has planned for you. And that reflects who you think God really is. I think it's some crazy prayers I've ever heard. Praying for twins. You know what that reflects? You know, I, we know, you know one of our friends prayed for twins. First uh, pregnancy, and he got twins. You know, that reflects that he believes that God will do favors for him. What does that do? Well, you know, twins. You know, you just get twins. That's nothing, you know, it doesn't help save souls or, you know, it doesn't like, you know, bring the, his kingdom a lot of money or something. It's it just, but our friend wanted twins. So he's like, God, I would like to have twins. And he got twins. I think people have prayed for the weather. Do you believe that God will help you in the little things? People that pray about their direction in life. Do you believe that God cares where you go to university? What kind of job you get? What kind of person you marry? Do you believe that? I think about people that give contribution generously. Generously. You know, what does that reflect? God will provide. God rewards. I am grateful to God. Because it's funny, the thing with generosity. Different people look at different amounts. I'm not even talking about how much money you already have. But people look at different amounts and already consider it generous. Already consider it generous. Like, you know, if you got... um, you know, if you got, uh, you know, $20 in a Lycee, you'd be like, this person's not generous. Mm. Not really. Yeah. Especially if you got it from a family member or something like that. Yeah. You're like, that's not generous. Yeah. And yet, if you go the way in Hong Kong where there isn't really a tipping culture and you tipped $20 more, yeah. you'd be like, the person would be like, whoa, this is abnormal. This is generous. Because yeah. it reflects what kind of expectation you have. Yeah. How much you value God and God's kingdom. And when you don't give generously, it's the opposite. You're afraid. You think that God is either powerless or does not care or will not help. Yeah. You know, what would you do today? What changes to your life would you make if you believe that God has an amazing life planned for you? Wow. Hebrews eleven six 6 says, And without faith it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. Yeah. 
You know, Peter, he, he believed Jesus' words. God said it. That settles it. He didn't ask for Jesus to give him the ability to walk on water. He said, no, Jesus, tell me to come out on water. If you tell me, I will come. You know, anything the word of God commands us to do, we can. There is no excuse. Yo, I can't do that. When the Bible says, do this, do that, seek God with all my heart. I can't do that. Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. I can't do that. That is a lie. Yeah. You think, you know, do you really believe that God is kind of God? Like Jesus standing in the water and Peter's like, hey, if it's you, Jesus, and Jesus is like, it is me, walk out, tell me to walk on the boat. Jesus is like, huh, yeah, come, come towards me. And Peter just falls into the water. Like, do you really think that Jesus is that kind of God? No. You know, Peter, he demonstrated great faith. He actually learned this from someone else, the Roman centurion. Matthew 8, 5 to 10. When Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed, suffering terribly. She said to him, shall I come and heal him? The centurion re replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go and he goes, and that one come and he comes. I say to my servant, do this and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, Truly I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. You know, it's amazing how even atheists, when they read the Bible, can have more faith than people that have grown up religious their whole life. It is mind-blowing how someone can read and go, well, that's what it says. I remember a, a brother, you know, Brother H., I was privileged to be in Brother H's Bible studies at the time. And at that time I was a young Christian, and I went, he comes from a totally atheist background. And he goes, well, if I'm going to seek God and see if this is really true, well, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to look at it and take it for what it is, the Word of God, and that it, if God is real, then this is the Bible, and this is true, okay? I'm going to live according to it, and then we'll see if it really comes true. And that's, he just read the Bible, and he just obeyed it. And he believed in God, and he's still faithful to this day. And how many, you know, even religious people, people that go to church every week, that we study the Bible with sins, that you show them a scripture, it goes like, hey, uh, um, seek God with all of your heart. Well, but you got to understand this, and you got to understand my situation, and my life is like this. Where is the faith? Is your first reaction to the word of God fear and doubt, or is it faith? Come on. You know, and we're going to talk about this uh, interesting thing. You know, Peter walked in the water, right? Yeah. How often have you heard this phrase, one step at a time? I want to take things one step at a time. I want to take things easy. Yeah. Guys, I tell you, there is nothing easy about walking on water. True. Yeah. Okay? Like, it's easy in a certain sense, but in your head, it is not easy. Okay? You know, one step at a time. Yeah, step one, walk on water. There is only one step. The first step, it's water. There's, you know, boat, there, there is the boat, and then there is the water. There's no, like, uh, boat, then ice, then, like, wet ice, then, like, you know, a piece of wood floating on the water. It's not like that. It's boat and water, you know? We often want to take things one step at a time. And yet when the problem is, when step one looks difficult, we invent extra steps. And overcomplicate Christianity. Why, do you, like, why does it look so hard to you? Well, because you, you're making it harder than it really is. Yeah. Yeah. You're making it more complicated than it really is. Yeah. Think about Peter in this situation. Jesus is like, well, come. It, it, it's as simple as it gets. There's no command that's more simple than the one word command. Yeah. It's like really simple. Come. Yeah. Peter, you know, maybe think about what, what he could have been tempted to think. Rather than stepping onto the water, maybe he'll make up a bunch of steps, you know, break it down. Let's, let's break it in that first step into a bunch of little steps. You know, step one, go near the edge of the boat. Step two, hold the side of the boat. Step three, sit up on the edge of the boat. Step four, watch for the wind. Wait for a good time. It's not a good time to walk in the water yet. Just waiting, just waiting. Jesus is there standing, going like, are you coming or not? Um, and, and I'm going to wait for a good time to think about do I really want to go in the water? Let's, let's look safe. Yeah. Come on. You know, and then I'll grab a last minute snack, look back to my friends, are they coming? And then, you know, step six, you know, and then I'll sit there and think about life for a bit. 
do I, do I really want to go over there? I'm like, do I, do I, do I, how, how long do I know this guy for anyway? Like a year? Like, you know, I don't know this guy. Yeah, at the end of all that, he still would not have taken a single step. He will go, my man, I worked so hard. I, I went through six steps, seven steps, eight steps, ten steps. And Jesus is like, you're still on the boat, mate. You haven't, you haven't, you haven't done it yet. Today, God calls us to full commitment. This is step one. 2 Chronicles 16, 9. For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. You've done a foolish thing, and from now on, you will be at war. You know, sometimes I look at the, the scripture and I go, I'm at the second part. It, it's just that situation. It, it's, it's, I don't, I don't want to read that part because it's confusing if you don't know the story. This king was in a situation where a war was coming to his doorstep. And instead of turning to God, he's like, yeah, and being fully committed, he gave in and compromised. And then the prophet tells him, well, you chose not to follow God, not to be fully committed to God. So this, now you will be doing it the hard way. You'll win this war not by God delivering you but by your own hard work. Yep. You're going to fight for it. You're going to bleed for it. Many people will die before the end of it True. because you were not fully committed to the Lord your God. Yeah. Wow. You know, without full commitment, there is no step two. Mm. There is no step two because God's going to go, man, I'm going to call you to all kinds of crazy things. Are you in? And you're like, well, let me think about it. God's like, okay, think about it then. I'll go and help someone else. Mm. You know, Jesus was walking on a leg and he was about to pass by. If uh, Peter was like, hey, Jesus, call me to come out to you on the boat, uh, on the water. Jesus is like, come. And Peter's like, well, I want to think about it for a bit. And Jesus is like, okay, well, um, I'll, see, I'll see you on the other side then. Bye. Come on. But today, Jesus has already called us yeah. through his word. Yeah. You know, this is the way to greater faith. For Peter, this was the way he really knew it was actually Jesus. He goes, hey, if it is you, call me to come out. Not that Jesus walked on water only, but that Jesus can make him walk on water. Yes. You know, with abilities and achievements, you can impress. But actually helping someone change your life will inspire them. Yeah. True. People are not attracted to your spirituality. People who want to be spiritual are attracted to people who they think can help them be closer to God. Yeah. So you got to focus on making them change into a disciple. John 6, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up at the last day. Wow. In conclusion, yeah, we had looked at two points today. Point number one, are you doing life the hard way? Mm-hmm. Are you really just trying to hold on to the way you think your life should go? Mm-hmm. Or are you ready to hand in all your cards to submit to God's plan and to become a disciple? Wow. Study the Bible every single day this week. See how it will change your life. It'll only take you a week. Point number two, you can walk on water too. You know, it's all about, man, it's not just about admiring Jesus. That's very important, but it's, Jesus doesn't just want us to admire him. He wants us to follow him. He wants us to follow him in the spirit and in truth. So guys, today, choose to do life God's way and have your mind blown away by how easy it is when you just start today. And to God be all the glory. Amen.